are here in our first stop in Colombia. We have officially made it to Medellin, just checked into our hostel, and really excited to take a walking tour this afternoon. We've only been here a couple hours, but Medellin is a beautiful city. It's in the mountains here, and it's huge, and it just everything goes up and down. They don't level it out. They just build into the environment. It's awesome. We checked into our hostel and it actually has two different buildings. So one has a really cool rooftop patio that we're standing on now. And then the building that we're staying in has a swimming pool. So we are definitely going to check that out at some point during our stay. I feel like hostels have a bad rap in the travel industry, but we really enjoy staying at them because uh, they have so many amenities that you wouldn't get staying at an Airbnb. They always have activities planned, they have bars, sometimes they have like a common kitchen you can use, and you don't have to stay in a dorm. We actually have our own private room and that's all we've ever stayed in in hostels, and they're really nice. We're in Colombia, walking the streets, headed to meet our guide for another tour. Super excited, we're going to Comuna 13, which has been a completely transformed neighborhood. So uh, we're, we're gonna learn a lot more and share. Right now, we made a stop for some snacks. So, these have been arepa con queso. It's like a corn pancake. It's very good. We are now taking the bus over to Comuna 13, where we're going to go walk around and look at the uh, different graffiti and murals. Now, we're walking through Comuna 13. This is the area that was really dangerous before in the Pablo Escobar times. It used but to be the most dangerous district in entire Latin America. Now they've kind of turned it into a tourist area or area a lot of tourists come to. So we're excited to check it out, see all this nice graffiti and see how the community has changed. from our guide that it was uh, really violent here in the 80s and they had three different guerrilla groups who kind of controlled the areas and had their turfs and they really just ruled this there was no police presence or anything and then at the end of the 80s hip-hop was introduced graffiti hip-hop break dancing and then learning how to mix music was introduced through schools and it really started transforming this neighborhood and giving them hope of being able to do something different Escalators were built in 2008 to provide more accessibility to this area and the neighborhood. Um, it's built up on this massive hill and it also allows for more tourism to come. I frankly cannot imagine climbing up all these hills to get to the very top. There's so many stairs. Uh, so the escalators definitely make it a little easier for people. So the four uh, elephants behind represent the four different uh, parts of the hip hop that came. We have the dancing, we have the music, we have the DJ, and then the big elephant over the top is the graffiti who's representing the, the transformation here that happened. This is why we get a guide for something like this, like a city walk too. And sometimes it's cool just to look at the graffiti and appreciate it, but these are things that obviously we would never pick up on our own. It is interesting, they have all the escalators and then like schools that they've built which have made it nicer and more, again more accessible for people and it allows families to have childcare to get to work and get to work through all this transportation. But he also talked about while the government's done a lot of things, they had to do a lot to get themselves out too and part of the price they paid for all this government assistance was the military coming in to try and clear out the guerrillas and unfortunately there was a lot of collateral damage for the local community too. The other thing too, we mentioned Pablo Escobar before and from what we read online and from what the guides have told us, 
they don't really like that he's kind of been glorified, he killed so many people, and so some of those Pablo Escobar tours they don't recommend. Yeah, we've seen some artwork and our guide has told us that it still makes money, so people keep doing it, but it's definitely something that like impacted this community so much in such a negative way that you can understand why they wouldn't want to talk about it. We actually just went and walked a little bit of the Centro area of Medellin. There were so many people. We didn't even bother taking out the GoPro and I recorded a few things on my phone. But really just a park with some sculptures and stuff. It seemed like a nice hangout place to be. before we left home and he's in desperate need so we went to a barber shop around the corner and he's getting a trim right now. First foreign haircut experience I think was pretty good. He even gave me like the straight razor and everything, a lot of attention to details, a little nerving, but it's great. Just wrapped up our Comuna 13 tour. Overall thoughts? It was really cool. It was nice to go and learn from the guide. I think we did the tour through Get Your Guide and like Kyle said, it's just nice to have someone explain stuff to you and it was just really cool to learn more about the history of the neighborhood. Yeah, I had read online mixed reports on whether or not you could go and do it on your own and we chose the guide just to learn a little bit more anyways. I would say after going there, I would definitely say you could have been there on your own. I mean, there were so many tour groups. It felt very safe the entire time. Yeah, definitely. If you want to do it on your own, you can, but then you don't get to learn as much. Go with the guide.